Today we're going to look at using the Elgato Stream Deck as a custom controller for Reaper. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned to the end to hear our special offer. I've actually owned the original Stream Deck since 2018, and I bought it for this purpose of controlling Reaper, putting my favorite shortcuts on the Stream Deck, and using that kind of as a replacement for the keyboard. Um, originally, I wanted to do drum editing with my laptop, a mouse, and the Stream Deck, and not use the keyboard at all. It turned out that the feel of the buttons wasn't ideal for that, but I think it's still a powerful tool um, for other tasks, uh, the less common functions that uh, you might use on a regular basis, but not enough that you actually want to replace the keys on your keyboard with those functions. The Stream Deck also has the benefit of being a touch screen, so it's got labels and images to help you remember what function is what. Mostly I'm using the Stream Deck for recording my videos. So I'm using the Streamlabs OBS software. I have a custom layout with all my different scenes, audio sources, under more, I've got my record and start stream buttons, different kind of overlays. And as I'm recording, I can do things like switching camera angles or switching to uh, multiple camera angles like this. And these are just different scenes in OBS. So today I'll show you how to set up a Stream Deck for triggering Reaper actions and a couple examples of each type. So things like adding effects to a track, loading track templates, and, and I'm not sure what else, but uh, let's give it a try. So we're gonna open up the Stream Deck editor software here now, and we're gonna create a new profile. If it's showing default profile, just add a new profile and we'll call this Reaper. Can we rename it here? No. To rename it, you actually have to go into the Edit Profiles page. I'm going to rename it Reaper. And for Applications, we're going to select Reaper. I already have Reaper open, so that's why you see it here. But if you don't see it there, you can choose Other and then select Reaper. When you set this up in the Profiles, that means that if Reaper is the active application, then your Stream Deck profile for Reaper will appear on the Stream Deck. So it's automatically switching. And that's a pretty awesome thing when it works. Sometimes it's a little slow uh, jumping between different apps. So I've got Reaper active and you can see that empty profile is visible there. If I switch to Streamlabs OBS, it loads. If I switch to Firefox, then my Firefox logo or setup is visible. All right, so I'm just gonna delete this one. Let's first set up a profile switch. So I always put the top left button as going to the profiles. And so I make it go back to the default profile and I usually don't even label it. But the basic workflow and interface of this is to drag a function from the right column onto one of the buttons. This is the basic Stream Deck, so it has 15 buttons, but each button can be anything. It can be a folder, which unlocks another 14 uh, buttons and you can have folders inside of folders if you need them. But mostly we're going to be using the hotkey type of action here. Uh, Reaper has really good macro functions with the, with the custom actions, cycle actions, and scripting. All we need to do is assign a keyboard shortcut to trigger those. So rather than building macros with the multi-action function in the Stream Deck, we can do almost everything inside of Reaper. Hotkey will just send a keyboard shortcut to Reaper as if you were pressing the button on your keyboard. Um, pretty simple. You just want to make sure that it's something that's not already assigned. Let's just do the task of setting up different screen sets. So let's do screen set one. If you're unfamiliar with screen sets, then um, check my video on screen sets. I really love them. One of the easiest things you can set up to work more quickly in Reaper. All right, so if you click into this box, it's going to be, it says observing keystrokes. We're just going to press a button. That's the shortcut that's assigned. If you'd rather go through the menu and search through here, different like numpad, numpad keys or F keys, um, you can find the keyboard shortcuts that aren't actually on your physical keyboard uh, from that list. So we've got screen set one. I'm just gonna duplicate this, control C, 
or Command C on Mac, and Control V will paste that, and we'll call this Screen Set Two. And I know that I have my screen sets assigned to one, two, three, four, five on my keyboard. So I actually only use screen sets one and three most of the time, unless I'm doing video editing, which uses uh, four and five. But let's just clean these up a little bit. All right, so in Reaper, I've got screen set one, which closes all windows and just gives me the arrange view. And screen set three brings up the mixer with a docked toolbar and a docked effects browser. And I can easily switch between those two. You know, most of the time, I'm going to have my hand on the keyboard already. I'm going to use the keyboard for that. But it's just an example of something you can do with the Stream Deck. Let's say you have a favorite effect and you want to add that to a track with a button on the Stream Deck. Let's set that up now. So I'm going to go to a track and click on the effects button, find one of the effects that I want, like Duck from DVS Machines, one of my favorites. I'm going to right click, create shortcut. And in here, we just choose a keyboard shortcut. Let's make it something that's unlikely for me to accidentally press Control Alt 1 and OK. And that's not already assigned. So if I press Control Alt 1, that adds in the plugin. Cool. Let's clear that and go over to the Stream Deck software. Let's put the effects in a folder. So right click and create folder. And let's name this folder FX. Give this a color. Let's do orange for the text color. Cool. And maybe a little bit bigger. Works for me. So inside there, we can just double click to open it. And we're going to add in a new hotkey. And so we'll call this one duck. And now in the hotkey section, we can add that keystroke, which was control alt one. Now when I switch over to Reaper and I press that button for duck, duck gets added to the track. If I press it multiple times, more of them will be added to the track. Let's do one more for another of my favorite plugins, Vumped Deluxe from Klanghelm. Right click, create shortcut. Let's do control alt two and okay. And then we'll switch over to Stream Deck. And let's just, often it's faster to just duplicate, rename. So we'll call this Vumped. And we'll give it the keystroke of control alt two. All right, let's set up another one and do it the opposite direction. So we're going to, um, pick a function, assign a keyboard shortcut, and then we're going to use the learn function in Reaper's action list to assign that to a function. So hotkey, I'll give this a name like show effects chain. And looks like we'll have to put these on separate lines like that and resize. And maybe we'll choose a different color. Yeah, that looks good. We can choose the icon behind there, but it's a little bit of a, a pain if you don't have that already prepared. So I'm just going to skip that. So I'm going to do Control Alt 0 for the actual uh, keyboard shortcut there. And when I go to Reaper, open the action list, show effects chain, toggle show effects chain windows for selected tracks, going to hit add, and then I'm going to press the button on the stream deck and it got that control alt zero. So now let's add in vumped and duck. And then we'll toggle the effects chain, which brings up this window and I've pressed it again, it will hide. It doesn't hide all the windows because they were already there, but if they were closed, we can show them like that. So how about track templates? How do we do that? It's a little bit different. We're going to use an SWS extension uh, function for that, the SWS resources window. All right, so we're going to open the extensions and go to resources. If we go to track template, we've got a few different track templates uh, installed here. So let's take my basic track folders template here and assign that to a shortcut. So I take the action list and I look for SWS template, and 
I've got this one on slot number seven. So import tracks from track template slot seven. And so we'll add this to a keyboard shortcut. So let's do control shift alt P. And we'll just remember that when we go over to the Stream Deck software, switch to our Reaper profile. And again, let's make a new folder, call it our track templates. Looks OK to me. Double click to jump in there. And then let's add in a hotkey, basic folders. Text can be a little bit bigger. I've already forgotten what that was. Control Alt Shift P. OK, so now when I press that button for basic folders, it gives me folders for starting a mix. So I've got my drums bus, percussion bus, bass bus, acoustic guitar bus. This is essentially doing the insert track from template and then choosing the template. Using the resources, we just kind of shortcut that by um, choosing a specific list of ones and then um, assigning a keyboard shortcut to that. So let's do another one for a specific instrument. So as you know, if you use that shortcut insert virtual instrument on new track, that shortcuts a lot of the steps for setting up an instrument. And um, if you were just to assign a shortcut to add um, an instrument to a track, it's not going to have those same settings. So we need to first set up an instrument track. I'm going to right click here, insert virtual instrument on new track. I'm going to take DS Thorn, one of my favorite synths. And we can even choose a different preset. So let's take um, Black Sub. Sure. Doesn't really matter, but. Whatever settings you want to save, you can put them in there. We're going to keep it record armed, monitor enabled. The effects is on the track. We can set the volume down a little bit if we want. We can, I think we can choose the track height. Right click, save tracks as track template. And then put this in instruments and call this DS Thorn. Save. And now when we double click in the name or the path, we can choose it from the instruments folder. And so DS Thorn is right there, open. And uh, that's automatically added that in. But let's delete these and go to the action list, find slot eight. So import tracks from track template slot eight. And let's just do Control Shift Alt O and OK. And so back to the Stream Deck. Let's do um, a new hotkey and DS Thorn and Control Shift Alt O. And there we go. So let's close all these. And now I'll press the DS Thorn button on my Stream Deck. And so I've got the synth added. So if I go through and take the time to set up a bunch of different uh, templates with all my favorite synths, one tap adds it to the track and I can immediately start recording. Pretty sweet. So that's it for the demonstrations. There's so many things you can do with the Stream Deck for Reaper, but essentially it's just assigning a keyboard shortcut and linking that in the action list to whatever function you want to work. What we've seen today is all stuff built into the default functions of the Stream Deck. There's alternate uh, software that you can run on the Stream Deck, where basically you're using a web interface to send OSC. And that may be a little more responsive, but uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it. Uh, I didn't want to pursue that because I rely on the Stream Deck so much for my recording software. It wouldn't be easy to switch back and forth between different systems. There's also a third-party MIDI function for the Stream Deck. It's free, um, but it has a couple steps to set up. Uh, you can just find it when you click on the More Actions button and search for MIDI. Um, but it allows you to send control changes, program changes, note on, off, sysx, MIDI, show control, and Mackie control right from the Stream Deck. Let's say you're using the control change function. Well, you can use this for any control change thing that you would normally be doing on your keyboard, so like a MIDI keyboard. Um, so you can kind of have preset values for different MIDI CCs. Let's drop this in and look at so channels, commands, the value, whether it's a push, hold, toggle, um, and then 
you need to set up the Stream Deck um, MIDI ports for this. Program change would be great for if you um, want to set up different articulations or change the instruments while recording. And so uh, the Stream Deck kind of becomes an extension of your MIDI keyboard um, with programmable kind of macros for sending specific commands and things to the recording software. And that gets recorded into the MIDI performance. I think that's pretty cool. I don't personally have a use for that, so I haven't explored it very much, but I thought it's worth mentioning as well. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes on art, productivity, graphic design, and much more. Here's some recent examples of classes that I've taken. Intro to digital audio recording, learn the basics of Reaper DAW. If you're a Reaper user, of course, you're gonna like this one. Productivity for creators, starting a successful side hustle. This is from Ali Abadal. He has a lot of really great classes on productivity, forming better habits and things like that. This is a brand new class, Dirty Design with Draplin. I love all of Aaron Draplin's classes. I have not a lot of interest in creating and doing graphic design myself, but uh, I love hearing his thought process and uh, I love his results. And so I'm excited to watch this one. Intro to Loom, this is a really cool iPad app. I wouldn't have known about this app without, you know, just randomly searching for iPad in the Skillshare uh, class list. And I found this and ended up buying the app because I really liked it. So if that sounds interesting, you'd like to try that out yourself. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. If you wanna stay on for a full year, it's only about $10 a month. I really enjoy using Skillshare. I think it's a great fit for a sponsor for my channel and uh, I really appreciate them wanting to sponsor the channel. So that's it for the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.